Hey, John here, working hard, but not getting a lot of time in on a recording. I apologize for that. Let's get up to date on the latest of what's going on in the Z80 Retro repository, because I just put a new release out. All right, so let's see what I did here. Uh, now, in GitHub, because I'm in the Z80 Retro organization here, that's the URL, github.com, Z80 Retro, like that, okay? What happens is if there's something recent going on, in, in you know, recent to most recent to least recent order, you get these uh, updates over here. It says these repositories have been touched. So 20 minutes ago, I cut a new release here, all right? Now, this one is this over here, which is the CPU board. Uh, for the retro project. And while I'm recording, of course, my internet decides to run slow and or GitHub or whatever. Okay, so what's the real big differences here? <laughs> the motive here, <laughs> I had some soldering problems, as you saw in videos gone by, if you're following along. What I did, this is a very simple release, which is why I updated the middle number here, because I did modify the copper on the board i did not modify anything that has to you know no parts or anything else uh what i did is i made the the um the footprints a little bit bigger around this sd card case that's it and the motive was that i should be able to get more heat from the soldering iron <laughs> under those pads which was uh, i believe one of the main problems that i have had trying to get this darn thing soldered on I can do it, but it doesn't look right, and it takes a little bit of a, a little while to do it. I, I suspect I'm not getting enough heat underneath there. So that's the main motivation of this change. I finally started keeping some release notes. For those of you following along, scratching your head, I apologize. Um, I, I do record videos usually when I do these releases, so they are there if you've been keeping up with the series. But uh, this is obviously the right way to do this. I apologize for not uh, listing this before. Anyway, uh, what are the main issues, right? So that footprint, SD card footprint, number one motivation to get this thing out there. Somebody recently uh, were con conversing about R15 and 16. We'll look at that in a minute. I formally mark those in the schematic as do not populate. Again, if you've been following the videos, you would know that. But there are some people jumping in now, and I certainly don't blame you. Where are we at? Like 68? <laughs> There's a lot of videos about the evolution of this project. So if you're jumping in now, you may not realize that you probably don't want to solder in this resistor up here or the one uh, right up in here. All right? No big deal. Uh, either way, I don't think, because I've actually put some in and tinkered around with it. That's why they're there. I did promise that we would talk about it someday. Uh, maybe this year I'll get around to it. <laughs> the short of it is, and I believe I mentioned this before, that these oscillators are driving the clock signal and they run around the board. They're kind of far. You know, this main CPU clock has to run the CPU, the CTC, and the SIO. So this line goes around like this on the board. Or I don't remember if it goes that way or which way it goes. But the bottom line is that signal looked to me like it was ringing and that caused a little bit of overshoot close to the overshoot limit, if not over slightly, of the Z80 here, okay? And I noticed that by putting some uh, terminating resistors on there, it helped. It's not the right thing. Uh, optimally, what you'd want to do is put a terminator at the source, back terminate it. We can do a whole video on that, or you can Google around and see what you know different methods of termination do and how they work. Um, somebody in the Discord mentioned the other day that the right way to do this, and I know that, <laughs> is to put the terminator at the source. But the problem is there's so many tracks around these oscillators and behind the board, there's a bunch of tracks over here. There's just no room to put a through hole part. I could easily put a couple of surface mount jobbies in here, but that wouldn't be as retro as it is now. Granted, I got a surface mount thing here, but there aren't any through hole SD adapters that I'm aware of. If you really want it, as you know, you can plug in a uh, an adapter over here. Okay, so this is the main thing going on there. 
and I've been playing around with these diffs. So let's look and see what's up with those diffs. The link down there goes directly to this directory right here. And I've talked about this on my channel before, but it's been a long time. I mean, I don't actually update the circuit board very much, which is a good thing. It's relatively stable. It tends to work. But I've got these scripts down here, and the idea is that if I got version 4.3.3, and now I have version 4.4.0, what's the difference? Well, when you're dealing with something that, I mean, for all intents and purposes, this is drawings, artwork kind of stuff, how do you summarize the differences? Well, you can go in your Git repo over here. This is where I've got it checked out. <laughs> I can do a Git log, and I can see here's the um, here's me creating the uh, the new release. Here's the tag, and of course, you got a chicken and egg problem. <laughs> this diff script needs two tags <laughs> across which it'll generate the difference images. So I have to create the tag before I can generate the diff uh images and uh move i i moved them into a new directory as well so there's a couple of commits after this tag and the release went out but i would argue that's okay um it's you know you can see it in the website and we'll look at it in a minute but here's the deal so here's your 440 and the previous release uh was down here at 433 so there's a bunch of actually <laughs> some other uh items that probably should be in the release notes as well like i changed the digikey numbers on the five pin headers because somebody said hey the ones i expect were gone but here's some other ones which is fine i mean they're just headers uh get use any header you want really so dino wiggle i guess that's how you say it also suggested that there was a um page number that was uh, let me do this again when you do a git log if you go minus minus stat what it'll do is it'll show you all the files that were changed during that uh, upgrade, not just the the, uh, the 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 notes. Okay, so let's go back to Dino down here. Where's Dino? Uh, four three three. Yes. Okay. So he says change the doc page number reference in this file here. So I must have had the wrong page number in. Um, a CTC example in the uh, you know the 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 retro test programs. So and they there's a pull request. There you go. If you find a bug, make a pull request. You see your name in lights. Okay. Uh what else did I do? Schematic PDF minus the GitHub fumbling. Yeah, I'll show you the link in a minute. Uh, well, I showed it to you right now in the README file, which is what um, shows up down, uh, where are we, in the main uh, Z80 project page. The README is this down here. Now, I find it very annoying. In GitHub, if you click on a PDF file like this, they give you this wonderful little viewer in here that doesn't zoom right. It's a giant pain in the butt. I think this is worthless garbage. Then you got to download it, it clowning around to get the stupid PDF. So what I did is I linked directly to the PDF in here. Hopefully that's the generic one. Let's verify that it's the latest, greatest one. Then you can just open up the darn schematic. 440. Woohoo! I did it right. So this tracked the newer, the latest, greatest one. Uh, okay. So uh, I'll leave this open because we'll come back to. Well, actually, I should open it in a new tab, shouldn't I? <laughs> All right. So what else uh, changed? We'll come back to that in a minute because of the do not populate parts. So there's the Dino, the uh direct link uh fix the part numbers on the five pin headers to some that are actually in stock presumably then i this is me merging the readme differences because sometimes i'll edit on github other times i'll get it edited on my home system or whatever and this is what you have to do if you uh make uh, change things on github and then copy them into my home system that's what that is and here's today's major release uh you can see me playing around with these diffs here's all the new gerbers i updated the readme file the schematics and so on okay and this is the picture of the board that's on the readme page in the github repo as well and my little notes that we're looking at right now that are also in the readme file 
Here's the new diffs. We'll look at those in a minute. More diffs and clowning around. I renamed files you know, to clean up the thing to get the release out the door. Okay, so that's the uh, the sum total of all the files that were touched. Let's look at these diff files so that you're not taking my word for it so you can actually see what has actually changed. Okay, so if you click on the diffs directory here, or you go to the bottom of the readme file way down here and click on the diffs directory link there, you end up in here. Okay, so I I don't know if I'm going to keep writing scripts or make this into a make file someday. I don't know. I don't have time for that this morning. Uh, just get it done was my goal today. All right. So what this is, is I just went from 433 to 440. And like I say, the 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 numbering here is may, the the primary number will change if I've changed something that requires new software, like port numbers might have changed or something like that. The second number will change whenever there's a copper change in the actual circuit board. Does that mean, uh, quite honestly, I could have made a mistake and I, I should order a new set and build another one. And I'll do that. But I'm releasing this without actually testing it, which is an enormous risk, especially for copper and things, because it actually means that it could cost somebody real money if I made a mistake and you put your board together, you use all the parts, take some time and order it. That could be a risk, okay? Now, how do we mitigate this? Even if you're doing it yourself, you don't want to mess around too much. Oh, let's look at the differences. If you type, click on the 433 to 440 Delta PCB.ping link. Once again, we get the viewer on... Uh, GitHub, which I don't really like. Hopefully, this will open up another viewer. Okay, so now we can see the whole thing in one page. And this is what the diffs look like. I talked about this uh, quite a while ago, maybe a half a year or a year ago, if you didn't watch that video. Here's what's going on. These are the front and back copper layers of the board. And it's the front and back layers of the 433 release and today's 440 release. And then there's a visual diff that takes place where everything is usually foggy like this and if there's a difference it's highlighted in red like down here so what did i change well i can look right here and clearly see i changed the size of these pads that's all if you ever do this run a diff like this and you see red everywhere <laughs> then you messed with a lot more than you thought and you could have created a serious problem so what I had to do to make this happen is I edited the footprint to change the sizes of these pads. And these ones I even moved out a little bit. These one I just grew, you know, in, in all in both two dimensions, just so that they stick out a little bit further, a little more meat uh, to hit with the soldering iron tip. Uh, and that's it. If I screwed up or if I forgot to do the uh, repour the copper zones and all that other stuff, then these things would not look this way. They'd look different. They'd be messed up. So I have a pretty high degree of confidence that I did the right thing here. Now to dive a little bit into what that means beyond, oh, look, here's a picture in my opinion of what it means. Here's the script. I think I looked at this once before. I got these, I defined the two tags up here in these variables, and then I, what do I do? I run some git commands that say, go get the version of this front copper file, in this case, that has this tag on it, 433, and save it in this file over here. Then go get the version uh, of the back copper, put it over here. Go get the PDF of the schematic and save that from version A. Get the same files from version B. And then there's these uh, compare functions that come with image magic that will generate a visual diff. So I said go to version B and version uh, A of the PDF of the schematic. Of course, you have to actually remember to export the schematic in order for this to work correctly. And then create a new PDF that's the differences. 
and then do the same thing with the front and back of the copper and then you know compare those all together so again the gerber view these are the gerbers this is not like go get the key cad description of what the board is supposed to be this goes and gets the actual uh, uh gerber files that i extracted from git up here for version a and version b okay and then i generate a ping file that shows the differences between those two files so i have a pretty high confidence that this is okay there's the circuit board and here's the schematic and of course we get to suffer with the viewer in this particular case it's okay but again, it's kind of faded and fogged out, and anything that's this neon red color are the differences. And you see that I changed the version number down here in the title block, and I made these boxes and some text here that is illegible on this uh, display, but at least it, it draws our attention to what I've done. So, I mean, uh, obviously, if I did something else, you might see red elsewhere, on, obviously, in the in the schematic. So that gives me a fair degree of confidence that I didn't do more than I remembered. You know, that whole thing. You mess with something and three weeks later, oh, I forgot what I did. Well, this kind of th thing sort of helps you out with that. Now let's go to the direct schematic PDF again. So here is the latest greatest schematic, which is the 4331. And to make sure that I'm looking at the right one, I'm going to zoom way in and go down here. <laughs> yeah, I misspoke. The 440 uh, schematic right here. To make sure that I remembered to export the darn thing and put it in Git so that the diff uses the right files. Okay. Now I know it uses the right files because I put these red boxes in here and I remember doing that. And when I looked at it, I'm like, yeah, that was what's supposed to happen. It was supposed to be limited to that. And that's what I got out of it. So we're good. Now let's look and see what I did here. Put these, I guess, orange warning boxes around our 16 here and a similar resistor over here, which is the other terminator on the other uh, crystal oscillator over here, our 15. I mark these as do not populate because, I mean, that was my intention all along. And we can look at this in another video where we actually clip a scope on there and say, look at the signal with and without this, or put a bigger resistor or a smaller one. These were meant to be uh, uh, preparation for future videos where we talk about some experimental ideas that may or may not be useful. Uh, and I apologize for not marking them as such at the time when i did that but like i said a few minutes ago i have actually run it with the 120s in there and the signal does look better uh, we are over uh over driving or over we're we're sinking more current than these oscillators are rated at when we run this with 120 ohms but uh these yeah i look if it works, it works. You know, even if we're stressing these things out, maybe they'll only work for 10 years instead of five. And how much fun do you expect to get out of this thing? Uh, I'm shocked that I'm still messing around with my original boards uh, from 40 years ago on occasion. <laughs> so who knows? You know, if you're concerned about this, and I don't think it's worth losing any sleep over, you can go in there with the wire cutters and snip these resistors out if you want to or unsolder them. But I don't expect there to be a huge problem. If these resistances are any lower than that, it could get creative and difficult. Okay? But I'm not that concerned about this causing any real problems. So don't freak out if you put them in. Uh, but if you're moving forward, feel free to leave them out. We'll eventually get back and talk about why I did that in the first place and what we can and can't do, what might uh, make sense moving forward. All right. So those are the main differences in this new release that I have just rolled out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.